Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about design patterns. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I have a senior software, co a software engineer co-worker in my team who said to me, the popularity of design patterns has led to a kind of pattern abuse and over-designing by junior programmers. Do you know what he means? Well, yes, I I know what he means uh, because I used to do this when I was a junior core. I wasn't even a, I, I wouldn't even call myself a junior. I was still in school in back those back in those days. So, what he means is that when a software developer learns about design patterns, it usually is because he is asked or she, he or she has asked the question, how can I write better software? How can I make my code better? And even when you go, and when and then he, he or she goes out on a journey trying to find good general guidelines for how to write better software. And some of these tips and tricks are absolutely useful and you should know about them, but then they always get by the design patterns. And there is a a lot of people, and it's almost without fail, who get a very pleasant mental feeling when somebody tells you, I have a blueprint, like I have a secret way that you can write code so that it always scales or that it always works really well. And that's what we call a design pattern. And then get, that gets their creative juices flowing and all of a sudden they go from learning about these design patterns to inventing their own design patterns or trying to mimic the design patterns or trying to implement them in ways that they think are going to make or be like, like they, they get into this as I like to call it, the philosopher stage where they are trying to come up with new and better ways to improve on these design patterns and the, the the tricky part about this is that they do that before they actually understand how to use the existing design patterns and that is what I'm going to guess that your senior co-worker is, is talking about because the thing is guys I don't know how many times I've seen reinventions of already existing concepts that don't actually re do much like they don't really make a difference to the end results they are just a different way of doing the same thing and in some cases they're actually worse like they they improve like yeah, I have an, an old co-worker who used to say that a lot of developers mistake progress Oh, sorry, change, they mistake change for progress. And I think that was a very powerful statement because he's basically saying that it, if, if, you, if you get into the wrong headspace, which is, happens with a lot of these novice programmers who are trying to reinvent the wheel, you, you focus so much on one part of an existing design pattern or some practice that isn't as nice as you would like it, and then you forget about all the other good stuff, and then you focus on just that thing, and all of a sudden, you convince yourself that even if you take two steps back in all other areas or in the really important areas of your design of the existing design pattern and took maybe one step forward in your own like from the perspective that you are focusing on you've actually ended up with a design pattern that doesn't really do well with the thing that it was designed to do you've just created your own implementation of something that doesn't actually work all that well I remember once upon a time when I was a junior and I actually almost flunked a class from my in school because I had created a provider pattern for all of my I, I, I had created this uh, it's basically well let's call it more of a factory pattern for all of the classes in my uh, in my code base or all the services it was in Java I was working uh, those day, in those days and the thing was that there was no common interface here what I basically had done was to create a function that would just return the uh, like whatever class that I, that I had created when I really only had one implementation so it was a single switch statement underneath that took the uh, took the string input or like the enum input and returned one, uh, one of the insta the only instance that I had, or null, or like just through an error because you no, know, I can't find an instantiation. And my my teacher came up to me and said, "Frederick, you have vastly over-engineered this." 
And I go, no, but I'm making it future-proof because whenever I need to change now the implementation of this instantiation, I can just add another case. And so my, my teacher very wisely says to me, well, yeah, but you don't have two implementations of this interface. You have one. And now you've actually made the code harder to read right now to fix something that you may never actually have to do. So you're creating a worse situation and since you know like I mean you're gonna hand in this next week you're never gonna do this why are you doing it and I go uh, and I try to defend myself and I try to go oh yeah but I'm trying to be future proof and I'm trying to think in the way that real software de I, I mean I didn't you know how real software developers thought I don't think I still know and he goes yeah 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 I get that but you, you're missing the bigger picture here the time it would take you to create this factory pattern when you actually have the use case is nothing you're actually just making the code worse now, making it more complicated to do so, so that it can do something that it never will have to do. And it's even if it needed to do it, it's actually easier for you to change it when it happens. Because now you need to maintain your implementation. So if something changes, you always have to account for that extra complexity that you just added. You need to maintain that while you're trying to do all the other stuff. But it, 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 and imagine you could save that you could save the, the save all of that work and just do make the implementation at the latest moment make as we call it, like make decisions as late as possible that's a fairly famous saying and the reason why this is powerful is because of this exact reason because if you're too clever too early or you're trying to complicate things with fancy design patterns or so forth before you actually have a concrete use for them well then this is a bunch of extra overhead and code that you need to drag along it's like trying to you know to if you're moving water from a lake to uh, to your house you can like uh, sure you can put some rocks in the basket so that when it's empty it's not going to blow away with the wind but if you're carrying both the water and the rocks at the same time that's a lot of extra work you might as well just put in the rocks when the water has already been delivered it's not like it's not going to blow away when there's it's a ton of water in it. It's it's a very similar sort of principle. You're doing extra work without actually getting any benefit from it. The most concrete example I can give you of this is actually in Fronten, where bef like uh, when uh, the import statement, like you you as if you work with Node for example, you know that we're use, using Common JS and we haven't actually gotten we didn't get support for. Uh, for ESM modules or JavaScript modules until I think it's fairly recently if it's actually for if still if it's depending on when you watch this anywho uh, it was fairly recently we got support for this and the the argument I made before we got that support was you should not use something like say Babel just to get the import statement and the reason is very simple because if you just use common JS even though you could use imports and like this uh, right syntax, you now have to transpile all your code to be in the ES uh, so that it actually does use common JS, the thing that is supported. That's what you need to do. And if you think about that, the work it takes for you to replace all your require statements into import when it is supported is nothing. It takes like what? A few minutes. You basically do a re regex rewrite. You do a search and replace. Even in a massive code base, we're talking about maybe maybe an hour of work and we're talking big systems now it's not it's practically nothing and on the other hand if you actually do opt into this more advanced solution and you actually just use the import statement in a syntax that is going to come in the future you actually now have to add a lot of extra you have to transpile your code you have to add more tools and more complexity to your workflow and it's actually not giving you anything you're not giving getting anything today you're gonna get it in the future, but you're not getting it today. It's like paying for something, like way before you get it, or as I like to say, to per uh, to pre-purchase games. That is a really, really good analogy. I think so. Anywho, so what I want you to take away from this is that if your coworker is telling you that a lot of the popularity of design patterns is kind of becoming an anti-pattern and novice programmers are like abusing and over designing things it is because he has a, he understands or if it's a she that whenever somebody gets excited about a new like a 
this this mental idea that some people have that there is a magical way of writing code that just in universally makes us much better they usually get into a philosopher's mindset and they try to improve things in a way like where they they try to just question all the established patterns and they try to make advanced abstractions and like optimize code and usually future proof it so that it's really it's always going to stay clean and future uh, and uh, scalable in the future what usually ha ends up happening is that they fuck up their here and now they actually make the code more complex or much more uh, uh, they they're basically creating a solution for a problem that they don't have and, re and the result is that they now have a worse code base than they had if they just kept things simple until the point where the design pattern or like a nicer abstracting is actually required and there's so many examples of this happening where you where some developer tries to to improve upon an existing pattern and they're actually not moving things forward they're just shifting it over to the side nothing has really changed nothing has actually gotten all that better and in many cases it, they, it's actually gotten worse have a great day